Go, go, go. Uh, all right, here we go. Allie and Dane work at a water park. We're familiar with Allie and Dane already, are we not? Yeah? You guys remember our good friends Allie and Dane? Yeah. Matthew? You remember Allie and Dane? I think you do know who Allie and Dane are. They're the two kids that work at the water park, and they have a job where they have to drain the pool at the end of their slide every day. You remember uh, when we looked at them before, they each had a uh, pump that was they were using to drain the thing. Remember who's drained faster? Allie was draining faster. Remember who started with more water in the pool? Uh, did she? Oh, yeah, and then she ended first. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> okay, so guess what? They decided that they should work together. Okay? Um, in this scenario, they decided to work together to drain their pools and created the equation g of x equals a of x plus b of x. So now we are working together. All right. So uh, first question says, what does g of x represent? Good. g of x is the total amount of water in both pools. Okay. All right, then number two says create the graph of g of x on a new set of axes using the graphs uh, that we are given. Do you guys have a graph thing? All right, let me get you one. So you guys are going to have to flip back to uh, the previous homework because in the previous, or in the previous uh, notes, we labeled the graph, didn't we? Uh, so what, um, oh, I guess it says right here that this is going by 4,000. So 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Did we come up with Dwayne, Dwayne Dane having 24,000 in the pool? In his pool? Okay. And uh, Allie had 28. Okay. And Dane took 24 minutes to drain the pool. Okay. And Allie took. All right, so when we make our new graph, uh, like I said, we need to think a little bit about the scale that we use. Um, how much water is there in both of the pools to start? Matthew, how much water is in both of the pools to start with? Combined, yeah. Do you know how much water is in Allie's pool? How about in Dane's? So 52,000. Okay, so that means our highest mark here has to be uh, 52,000. Um, so what do you guys think we should go by? 10,000? Well, no, that'd be, that'd be a really tiny little graph. 52,000 is the highest. Can you? Yeah, like how many, how much should each square be worth, do you think? 2,000. 2,000? Will that get you there? Do you have 20, 26 squares? Do you have 26 squares in the vertical? Matthew, do you have 26 squares on your y-axis available? Okay, so let's go ahead and go by twos then. Uh, one, two, three, four, 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 four. Really? I'm impressed with you also. And this is uh, water, total water. Uh, and then this over here would be, of course, uh, time. Uh, and I didn't write the thousands because I'm lazy. I just went 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Okay. And what did you say we started with together combined? 52? 
So I'll put a dot at 52. Uh, how long? What's up? How many minutes do you think it'll take for them to drain it all together? Forty-four minutes, you think? Because it took twenty and twenty-four, right? Let me guess. Okay. Uh, so I think on the that axis, we can probably go by just ones. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm just gonna go by ones. But if you need to go by uh, twos. Then uh, go for it. Uh, okay, so what are some other points we can throw on there? How long uh, will it take for them? Like, if you look back at the previous homework, um, how fast was Allie's pump draining the pool? Or do we have an equation for Allie? Or what's some information we had from previous yeah 28,000 minus 1400x uh, okay so that means that she was draining 1400 gallons per minute yeah uh, what was Dane's equation okay that's what we're looking for. So all together, how fast will they drain the pool? How much per 2,400 per minute, right? So what do you say? Love it. 52,000 minus 2,400x, okay? Um, okay, so give me another point. Plug in a number for x. Tell me how much water will be left in the pool so we can craft this bad boy. Uh, okay, so if you plug in zero for x, then we'd have 52,000. That's that point right there. Okay, got that one. Um, what's another one that we would know? Okay, so if you plug in 10, what's how much water will be left in both the pools combined after 10 minutes? 28,000, great. So I'm going to put a point at 10 minutes and 28,000 gallons, okay? Uh, okay, what is another point that we have? Four thousand would be left at 20. Because uh, right, okay, so yeah, so then our time to drain the pool together was not correct, okay. Um, it was more efficient for them to do it together, or maybe we did something wrong. Let's not connect the dots yet. Let's see what happens next, okay. Uh, okay, write the equation for the function g of x using the graph you created. Um, so we came up with g of x equals 52,000 minus 20. What was the equation again? 
Minus 2400x. OK. Uh, OK, compare this equation to the algebraic representation of finding the sum of the equation. So in other words, if we went back here and we just uh, straight up added those together, what would we get? 52,000 minus 2400x. So those two things are the same. So Matthew, you must be correct that uh, when they work together, it's more efficient. Okay. Um, okay, so this point here seems to be incorrect. And then we can uh, connect these dots. Right. Uh, so it looks like it takes them half the time working together. Yeah. Hmm. Weird. Okay, should the algebraic equation of g of x be the same as the algebraic function created from the graph? What do you think? Should those two things be the same? Does it seem like they should be the same? Good thinking. Just blurt out an answer without thinking about it. Good strategy. Get you far in life. What do you think? Would the algebraic equation be the same as the graph? Yeah. Yeah, should be. Uh, why or why not? Um, I guess I would say because what? Yeah, sure. Because the equations and the graphs go together. Okay? Okay, use both the graphical as well as the algebraic representation to describe characteristics of G and X. I feel like we did something wrong. It'll be fine? Okay. All right, thank you. Appreciate that. All right, perfect. I like your enthusiasm. I don't know. But it's like asking for maxima and minima. It's just a straight line. Uh, but I like Talia's positive mental attitude. We're just going to go with it. All right, so each intercept. So what is the uh, x-intercept of our new graph, g of x? The x-intercept, yeah. 22, so 22, 0. And what does that represent? Uh, where it crosses, oh, yeah. Okay. What does that represent? <laughs> right. Where the uh, pools are empty. Is it? Okay. Uh, how about the y-intercept? Fifty-two thousand. Whoops, but that's the y uh, coordinate this time. So zero fifty-two thousand. Uh, and what does that represent in the? Okay, good. Well, the um, y-intercept will be the amount of water in the pool just at the beginning. Right, but uh, that's this zero right here. Because this, 
this zero represents the time this zero so this is how much water is in the pool at time t equals zero yeah this one oh this one right here um, so this is how long it takes for the amount of water in the pool to be zero yeah right yep exactly uh, okay how about the domain so lowest x to highest x I'm sorry? Zero to what? Good. And what about the range? What's the lowest amount of water that they have in the pool? Zero. And what's the most amount? Okay. Um... Yeah, there's no like maximums or minimums really. Uh, is it a function? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, explain why adding the two values of the y-intercepts together can be used to find the y-intercept of the other graph. Um, well, what do those wire intercepts represent in the real life situation? Okay, so, right, yeah. So how do you say that in words? Well, you guys get it, right? I mean, you're just taking the amount of water in each pool and putting them together in one pool, so it's going to be the same thing. I don't really know how to say that. Okay. Yep. Lindsay, calm down a little bit. You're getting a little, getting a little, uh, take a deep breath. Bring it back. Uh, okay, then the last one. Can a similar method be used to find the x-intercepts? We tried to do that for the x-intercepts. I tried to do that in the very beginning, right? Remember I said it took 20 minutes for one person to do it, 24 for the other, so together it would take 44. Um, did, did that work? No. Okay. Um, and why was that, Matthew? You so nicely said it. Why did it take them less time working together than it would have? I mean, Thumbs up from McKenna. Uh, okay, so will you guys uh, start working on the homework that is associated with that lesson? And I will uh, stay available in case you have questions about that. But um, try and do that as much as you can on your own. Yep. Okay, so you just plug in negative uh, 4 for the t. So 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Negative 8 minus, what's that? Oh, they just named this function h. Like they could have named it Pete or Dave or Josie, but they named it h. Plug in 13, yep. Uh, okay, what do you get if you plug in 2 for uh, x? Uh, if I go over here to where x is equal to 2, 
what do I get as an answer? Oh, I think it's 10. No, I think it's 10. Don't you think it's 10? I think it's 10. Uh, what number do you need to plug into this to get 3 as an answer? Maybe that's 9. Where does this... If I, if I go straight up from 2, where do I hit the graph? I guess that's that's 9, isn't it? Yeah, okay. I thought it was 10. Um, okay, then B is asking the opposite thing. What number would you have to plug in to get 3 on the graph? Where do you draw the line up from to hit the graph at 3? So now I'm going to... Now I'm going to go, yeah, it'll just be one, because now I'm going to go to three and then go straight down, and then that is uh, x equals one. Okay? Another way to think about this, McKenna, what are the coordinates of that point? Okay, which means when I plug in two, I get nine as an answer. What are the coordinates of this point? 1 and 3, which means if I plug in 1, I get 3 as an answer. Okay? So what do I um, get when I plug in 0? Good. Okay, so that uh, allows us to write an equation for that graph. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go back to that in just a second. Um, What's the uh, starting point on this graph? Uh, no, when x is 0, what's our starting point? 1. What am I doing to those numbers, the y values? By what? By 3. Yeah, so it would be 1 times 3 to the x. Okay. All right, let's go back to 1. Uh, Talia, what did you get when you plug 23 in? Uh, yeah, what's 23 times 2? Oh, nope, you did it the right way. Yes, nope, you, I am 100% sure. So B, I'm sorry, B is not asking what you get when you plug in 23. So I did that wrong with you, Nathan, I apologize. It's asking what you have to plug in to get 23 as an answer. And you're right, that's 14. Because 14 times 2 is 28, and 28 minus 5 is 23. Okay, this one is saying, what do you get if you plug in 13? 21. But then this one again is asking the opposite question. What would you have to plug in to get negative 33 as an answer? Negative 14. Okay, good. You're better at math than I am. Hey, Luis. All right, how about number three? Matthew? Matthew? Uh, what do you get if you plug in negative one? Yeah. To the r of x function. What do you get? Nope. 10. So if I plug in negative 1 right here to figure out what I would get as an answer, you go up to the graph. Okay? Yeah. So you would get uh, 10.
What? You couldn't find where they cross. Okay, hang on just a sec. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, which one are you on? Uh huh. Yes. Mm. Yep. Yep. Uh huh. And then you added five and divided by two? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so for 3b. When the function equals 4, what does x equal? What x value do you have to plug in to get 4 as an answer? Okay, good. Okay, and then what uh, does the function equal when you plug in 2? Also 1. All right, so the equation for this is what is the uh, slope? Nope. I don't think so. If I go, I'm just going from like this point here to this point here. How far down do I have to? Yeah, down 3 over 1. So it would be negative 3x. Yep. Where does it cross the y-axis? Yeah, 7. Okay, so negative 3x plus 7 is the equation for that one. Okay. We ready for number 4? Okay, number 4. Does it have instructions? Okay, so this is like what we did with the pool. You missed this because you weren't here. Um, so we are going to just add these y values together. Okay, so for example, the y value right here is uh, 0, plus this y, y value right there is 4. 0 plus 4 is 4, so that means there's a point right there. Okay. Um, Let's look at this point right here. These are kind of gross. No, but I mean the points are not great. Um, like three isn't even. They're not even. Yeah, three's not even in the middle exactly. So that's not great. Well, let's go over to here. This one is zero, and this one is two. So if we add those together, we're going to get uh, 2, right? 0 plus 2 is 2. And really, that's all we need. Because now we can just take our rulers and connect those dots. Like that. Uh, is that all we needed to do? No, I chose the places where one of the graphs crossed the x-axis because then that y value was 0 and it made it easy, easy to add it on to the other one. I could have chosen these two points right here. This, that y value is uh, negative 4. This y value is positive 4. When you add those together, you get 0. So that would be on there. Do you have to come up with a function for that, McKenna, or are we just... Okay, make a new function. All right, so we did that. Okay, how about number five? Uh, what x value do you want to add together? Five. Uh, there, uh, five isn't on the graph. Five, two. two? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, let's do negative 2 because that has one of the y values is 0, and this one is 1. So that means it's just going to be that point right there. Let's add together the, x, the y values at x equals 4. What does this graph equal when x is 4? 6. What does this graph equal when x is 4? Negative 2. So if I add 6 and negative 2 together, I get... 4, so that means I'm going to put a dot at 4 there. Uh, Luis got at this got us that point right there at negative 2 already. Mm 
Yeah, this is weird, huh? Okay. Right. Okay, so here's what I did back here at this uh, graph. What are the coordinates of that point? Negative 4, 0. Okay. What are the coordinates of this point on this graph? Negative 4, 4. So if I add those, I'm going to leave the x coordinates alone, but then I'm going to add the y coordinates together. What do I get? What do you get when you add 0 and 4 together? What did you say? I'm sorry. 4. Okay. That, no, that's okay. So four, negative 4, 0 is a point on my new graph because I just took and added these y coordinates together. Okay. Let's pick another two over here. What's the coordinates of that point? 4, 4. What are the coordinates of this point? 4, negative 4. So if I add these y coordinates together, what do I get? 0. So that means the point 4, 0 is on my new graph. Okay? Okay? What's up? I don't know. In the thing that you missed when you were gone, we were... Uh, Al, Allie and Dane were draining the pool together, so we had to add the two lines together. But I don't know what these like represent. Uh, kind of, yeah. It's like the average of the two. Uh huh. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Does that kind of help? Okay. Kind of? A little bit. Yeah. Got it? Okay, so I was doing the same thing on the next one then. Um, pick an x value. Oh, where do they equal each other? Okay, so if we go back here, where, what, um, where do they, th where does f of x equal g of x? No? Oh, okay, let's do 5 and then do that. Uh, pick an X. 2? Okay. What is this? Uh, cord the coordinate of that point at X equals 2. 2 what? 2, 4. What's the coordinate of that point? 2. And so that's dumb because, believe it or not, they're going by point fours. That's what the scale is. So this would be negative 0.4, negative 0.8, negative 1.2. Okay? So if you add those together, what's 4 and negative 1.2? What do you get when you add those together? Uh, 1.2. Yeah, so that means our new point would be at 2, 2.8. So 2, 2.4, 2.8. Okay, give me pick another x. Negative six. What is the coordinate of this point? Negative six two. What's the coordinate of this point? Okay, good. So if you add those together, that's a little bit easier. Uh, two and negative four is. What do, what do you get when you add 2 and negative 4? Negative 2. So that means our new point would be right here. Is that kind of? We're just adding the y coordinates together of those points? Okay. Okay, sure. Uh, and then once we got two points, since we had two straight lines to start with, we know we're going to have a straight line to uh, finish. So all I have to do is just connect them.
Okay. Yeah, so you could pick any point. And so like when we did this the first time, yeah, and it'll be on that same line. So Luis chose negative 2. Well, that's 0. That's that right there. So we add those together. It's going to be there. It would have been on the line also. doesn't matter which one you choose. Yeah. It has to be on one of the, yeah, one of the two that they give you. Yeah. Uh, no, we still we still had that point right there was on there, and then this one I think. Right, this point was on there too. So if I stretch this line out, it would still it'd be the same line. Okay. Okay, number five, use the graph to answer the following questions. Where do, so this is what you're talking about. Where does f of x equal g of x? Work at what point do those two graphs cross? Two comma five. Okay, what is f of 4 plus g of 4? So when you, what's the coordinate right here? Uh-huh, 4, 7. And what's the coordinate right here? 4, isn't that a 6? 4, 6. So if you add those together, you get... Uh, 13, right? 6 plus 7 is 13, okay? Uh, what is g of negative 2 minus f of negative 2? So what do they equal at negative 2? That's going to be a little weird. Uh, what's g of negative 2? What's the y-coordinate of that point? You want to go with three, round it a little bit? It's okay. That's fine. We just won't tell anybody. Um, okay, and then what is uh, f of negative two? What's the y coordinate of the one? Good. Um, so this time we're subtracting them for some reason. Yep. So three minus one is two. Okay. Uh, okay, and then where is the g function above the f function? Where is, it says, state the interval where g of x is greater than f of x. Where is the g function above the f function? Uh, yeah, over what interval? Negative 7 to where are they the same? 2. Yeah, so anywhere from negative 7 to 2, the g function is above the f. Okay. All right, got time for one more maybe? Okay, where is the r function above the h function? Yep. From 0 to 2.3. All right. What is R of 1 minus H of 1? So what is the R, what is the graph of R equal when X is 1? Uh, the R graph. You did H. This one right here. I think so, yeah. So 0 0.5 minus what is uh, h of 1? Okay, so if you subtract 0 0.5 minus 0 0.2, you get 0 Yeah, so what is uh, what is R of 0? Where does R cross the y-axis? Okay, plus, where does the H graph cross the... Yeah. So if you add those together, you get uh, 
Okay, for part D, R of X is a curved graph. It's the exponential one. Where does it start? Yeah, it's part D. I'm just doing it down here. The Y intercept? Well, this one's got its curve. Uh, the Y intercept is 1. And then uh, what's it being multiplied by each time? So this point right here is 0, 1. This point right here is 1.5. This point right here is uh, 2. And then about 0.25. So what's happening to the Y values each time? Yeah, but what are they being multiplied by t to make them decrease? By what? Yeah, good. So 1 times 0.5 to the X. Uh, and then the h of x function is really simple. What does it equal all the time? 0 0.2. Okay, so now i got to do a little subtraction. That's exciting. So this one is 1. This one's 0.2. If I go 1 minus 0.2, then I get 0 0.8. If I go over to here and go 0.5 minus 0.2, I get 0.3, so that's going to be in there. And then if I go 0.25 minus 0.2, then I get 0 0.05, yeah, which will be uh, down here. Uh, that one I don't think is a straight line because the top one is not a straight, straight line. Yes, yeah, so it's got a little... little that action going there, okay?